In this third episode of Macro Experiments, we're going to reconsider the member macro that we created last time. In the first episode, we came up with a need for a macro and kind of stubbed it out. Last time, we implemented a member macro, and this time, we reconsidered some of the choices that we made. In addition, instead of fatal errors, we'll add more error testing of our own. Also, a very special thank you to Ole and Geek and Dad for their suggestions and their improvements to the macro I began with. So first of all, I've expanded the aspirations of this macro to apply to a class, struct, or actor. It still looks the same. We provide the type and we provide a string that will stand in for the names of the generated properties. And as a result, we expect the following members to be added to the class, struct, or actors. The computed property numbers, which is an async stream of ints, that vends underscore numbers, and the stored property that is the tuple underscore numbers numbers continuation that is created by make stream of int.self. Again, the details of async stream aren't important. The important part is what we start with and what we expect to end with. So last time we focused on the arguments of create async stream and noticed that there were two of them. There was the type int.self, which had the label of, and there was the string numbers, which had the label named. And you might remember the way we got at this was I wrapped node.argument in a syntax and then asked it for its children and then used a compact map to get an array of the correct type if they existed. This allowed us to check in particular that there were two arguments. So thing one that I want to stop and fix is I never actually checked that the type of the syntax node.argument was correct. And so let's add that check here. The other thing I wasn't happy with was that I took no.argument and I wrapped it up in syntax. If we go to the docs, we see that no.argument is an attribute syntax.argument and it's an enum. And one of the cases is this argument list and it has the correct type as its associated value. So instead of doing this to extract the argument and the correct type, it might be nicer if we used a guard case let instead. And so we take our no.argument and we guard case let that its type is the dot argument list, and we bind argument list to that resulting value. These both work and fail in exactly the same way, but the bottom one feels more proper. And so let's replace this with our guard case let version. We need to extract the arguments from the argument list, and we'll do it the exact same way. We'll use dot children followed by dot compact map to get an array of our arguments. And of course, we'll check that the arguments count is two. Our code feels right, but we should spend more time capturing what can go wrong. And we'll do that in a new type that we call create async stream error, which conforms to the error protocol. To begin with, let's have a case must have two arguments and it accepts the number of arguments as an int. And so in our code, there's two places that we can check this. The first place is if our guard case let fails, then we've got zero arguments. And the second place is when we're guarding that the arguments count is two, we can throw the same error because the number of arguments is wrong. Wrap this up in our static arguments method as before. And if everything succeeds, we return our array of arguments. And if it doesn't, we throw this must have two arguments error. So that's must have two arguments. Something we haven't checked for yet is we said that this can only apply to a class, a struct, or an actor, but we're not testing for that. So let's create a method called validate context that takes our decal group syntax. Remember that was our class example or would be our struct example or our actor example. And here we can check to see that the context is a class or it's a struct or it's an actor. And if it's none of those, then we can throw a create async stream error must be applied to a class struct or actor. All right, let's go back to the expansion method and use this method we just created. Remember that the second argument for expansion is that class struct enumeration actor, whatever it is that this thing is decorating. So we can call our validate context method and pass in that declaration. It doesn't return anything, but it throws an error if we're decorating the wrong type and it tells us what the error is. So if we're decorating the correct type, then we extract the arguments. And because there are two of them, we are confident that we can use argument zero and arguments one but we could have gotten here another way. I just want to take a little side trip to explain that. Once we got our argument list, we could have used the label to figure out which argument we have. We have the label for argument of, and we have the label for argument named. And we could have gotten at those two arguments this way. 
we're going to use indices, but we will verify that the labels are correct. And so let's look at what we do inside of the type method. Inside of type, here's what we did last time to take the attribute, get its expression, get at the member access expression syntax, and get the base. That's how we got int. And that's because this was the view of that argument we were looking at. But you might remember we simplified it to get here, and actually there was this before. We just weren't interested in the of and the colon, so we ignored them. But because they're there, we can ask the attribute for its label and ask the label's text, does it equal of? If it doesn't, we've got a problem. And this way, we're throwing an incorrect first argument error if the label is wrong, if it's not of, or if the expression is not a type. Similarly, we can do an analysis of the second argument. And so here's name. Last time we did this, and we can repeat what we just did for our type and check that the attributes label text is named. If it's not, we're throwing an incorrect second argument if the type of the argument is not a string or if the label is not named. And so we've accounted for the things that can go wrong with our macro. And we've also made the implementation a little nicer. If you'd like to see the code in full, check out the GitHub repository, dim sum thinking slash create async stream.